Hello, I'm Philip Meyer. Welcome to my video blog. In this video, we will uh, have a look at the Vectortron um, Vector Graphics uh, monitor that was on display on the VCFB um, Berlin recently. So, yeah, let's have a look. Well, today we want to look a little bit uh, into the technical details of the um, Vectortron display I've created for my VGI subsystem. We will not look all too much into the details of VGI itself as there is another video available, just see the um, description for that. We will um, examine the electronics inside here and I will explain you um, how to build a vector graphics XY monitor from scrap parts. So let's start with the most important part of the system here, the monitor itself. Um, the cabinet was specifically uh, was specially built to um, to uh, um, handle different orientations. So this is the portrait mode, so to say, but you can easily convert it into a landscape monitor. One sec, with one hand, of course, you have to be a bit more careful. But see now you have a landscape uh, mon vector monitor. So this is important. If you want to do, um, let's say, um, um, we want to display different arcade games, so there are portrait versions and landscape versions. Or I mean, it's just for different applications, and it's also possible if you use these angled um, um, connectors here. And if you, you would use angled connectors here as well, unfortunately, I don't have one uh, right now. But here you see also these uh, rubber pads, so. This monitor can also handle um, a cocktail table position, so you can also operate it as cocktail table. But this, uh, yeah, I, I don't think I will use it all too much. But yeah, that's also possible. So this is a versatile cabinet. The CAD drawings of this are available in the uh, VGI package, so you can download that and build the exact the same cabinet yourself if you like. Um, the bezel here that comes from a came from a scrap monitor from a 19 inch uh, industrial VGA monitor. I, I salvaged that. Um, yeah, you can also see um, it doesn't fit too, too much to the tubes, so I added a plexiglass shield here. Now yeah, this looks pretty decent. I, I really like the outcome um, of this. So I think we are done with the cabinet now. Um, let's um, have a little look outside at the graphics card. I mean, of course, that also depends on the application. You could also very well use the Easy Lace USB from Müller Electronic, but I have a new one here. This is the um, card that um, Tremel Hudson um, created for arcade games. and. Um, I think we look a little bit inside because it's very interesting and it's a, a design I like very much as well. So here we see the internals. This is the VSD board. You, um, you can download the um, the uh, design files from Terminal Hudson's uh, website. I will put you the link into the description section so you can download that and make one yourself. See. Um, Good thing about this, this is all um, through hole stuff. I mean, this SMD stuff you see here, that's uh, only the uh, Teensy module you can buy as it is, and then, you can, uh, then it's basically a, a through hole chip, so to say. And as this is all through hole components here, it's easy to solder. So you can just, if you if you get the PCB from somewhere, some, from some random PCB manufacturer, you can easily build one yourself. The software, of course, it's all open source, so yeah, go to Tremel Hudson's website and download the stuff. It's a really cool design. I modified it a little bit um, because um, in its original um, uh, condition it, it lacks the feature to center the screen. So I have uh, pots here to uh, center the screen. Um, in the original design this is a voltage reference and it's fixed. So um, yeah, that's a minor mod. But yeah, apart from this I, I pretty much um, um, stick to the original design. So I just mounted it into a metal case to, to have it a little bit more solid and more uh, rugged. But yeah, that's basically it. Um, yeah, and of course it runs uh, with my VGI system, so you can instantly use it, start using it, uh, no problem with that so far. Or you just use uh, the mods from Tamil Hudson for MAME um, to play arcade games. I mean, that 
depends uh, on your application. So here we have the cover removed and um, we see all the major parts here. We have the monitor here, see the picture tube and um, the board of the picture tube is mounted upside down here. So this is the driver board that creates the high voltage and does the video amplification. We basically drive the cathode here. This is the power supply for the monitor. Here we have the power supply for the XY amp. And here's the XY amp itself. So that is does the reflection. We have the deflection power coil um, and the deflection co original deflection coil from the monitor. Because if that is missing, it won't properly um, generate um, the high voltage. So um, on older monitors, this is uh, basically um, tuned like clockwork. So if you take something out, um, it will, will go haywire. So you need the inductance of the coil um, to um, operate it properly. So the monitor board here and the picture tube comes from an old IBM uh, green screen monitor um, which was shattered during transport. And you really can't believe me, there was nothing to rescue. So this is how the monitor case looked like um, when I extracted the picture tube. Um, Fortunately, the picture tube was fully intact, so um, I was able to save that it didn't implode, but the case, of course, there was no way to fix it. The monitor board is pretty much used and unmodified. Um, I use the video amplifier um, for the Z-axis, so that goes directly into the video amplifier of, of the um, original monitor board and um, does the on-off, basically on-off of the electron beam. Um, the deflection coil you see here is a um, um, special one. I took it from I, I took it from a Vectrex that was in semi good condition. It was really, yeah, pretty much done. So I took the um, deflection coil because you need a symmetric uh, coil. It has to uh, it has to be exactly the same um, inductance on the x and the y axis. So that's not true for the. Uh, raster scan monitor so they are asymmetric and yeah the um, line deflection the um, basically the uh, x uh, axis is, uh, would be fine there's a low inductance but um, the y axis has a very high inductance because it moves very slow so that's not usable for vector graphics um, if you don't have such a yoke um, you could also wind one, I say. I'm pretty sure it would work if you uh, invest a little time in that and I think you can make own jokes, but I was happy uh, that I could re reuse the, co the yoke from the from a Vectrex. Let's now look at the um, XY um, deflection amplifier. Um, for that purpose, I will carefully disconnect it and take it out to show you. So this is the heart piece of the um, whole thing. It's the amplifier that generates the magnetic field. Um, let's just have a quick look. We have uh, four power transistors here, um, which drives the current through the coil. Two for each axis. A few fuses for each channel, of course, um, to, to protect the yoke. And two op arms to drive the output transistors. And the uh, coil uh, is connected here, so that runs uh, to the uh, deflection coil. There's the power, you need symmetric power line, and the two inputs, X and Y. The design of the um, amplifier um, comes from Jürgen Müller. Um, he's a project that's called Asteroids Mini. We have, we have just a brief look. I put you the link into the um, description section. Um, this is a project about running an original arcade board um, um, with, with, with a Vectrex monitor, but the original Vectrex amplifier has a, little, has a, a lot uh, less bandwidth than the board required, so um, a new amplifier had to be designed. And this is a really simple and clean design, I really like it. I don't know if I could have made it by myself, I, would have, I think I would have spent a lot of hours uh, to, to uh, make a similar design, so I was happy to find that on the internet. So thank you very much, uh, um, Jürgen Müller, to, uh, to publish this um, 
the schematics and um, and uh, design files. So um, yeah, this is, this is really cool. I mean, it's it's all public, and uh, you can just send the board to a PCB manufacturer. I did the same. I just sent the board in, got it back, bought a few parts, switched it on, and it instantly worked. So this is this is a really cool stuff. So if you need an XY amplifier for an, a vector monitor, uh, I I recommend to go for this design here. So now it's time uh, to talk a little bit about protection. If you carefully look here, there's the wire, this gray wire here that runs to the deflection coil. And on that deflection coil I glued uh, a reed contact there, basically reed relay. And so what it does is, I use the coil of the reed relay um, to capture the magnetic field that is uh, generated during reflection. And if I see enough um, voltage on the uh, on that coil, I know the deflection is working properly. And um, this uh, basically is then connected to an MCU you find here. So this is a little MCU board. And this board not only is responsible for the um, protection, it's also generating the horizontal deflection clock. You know the horizontal sync signal from the from the PC that would run into the monitor from the PC and, and generates a clock that has to be simulated. So um, without the sig signal you wouldn't get any high voltage. Um, so that's done there. And um, so if the deflection, if a proper deflection is sensed, um, the board closes a relay and that relay um, basically turns on and off the power supply of the castle. So, if um, if the if a deflection failure is detected, it instantly turns off the cathode, and um, there's no uh, no more risk uh, of damaging the phosphor. Because as you might know, if a deflection failure fails, everything is sucked into one dot, and that dot number instantly burns into the phosphor. That is a real problem. So uh, protection of this uh, kind can't be left out. Um, yeah. And also, there's also a problem if the monitor is turned off because somebody switched the power, and the power switch, the deflection also fails because the power supply here goes off. And uh, even even worse, the um, board here, you see, still holds enough energy to uh, burn into the phosphor when it's turned off because there are capacitors, it, it, it continues running a few, uh, about less than one second, so um, that, that would instantly damage the picture tube. I already have um, a little um, burnt dot in my picture tube that is barely visible, but it's there, so a protection like this, it, it can't be omitted. Here you see how I connected the uh, read uh, relay to, um, to the controller. As you see, the uh, relay contacts are just dangling. I only use the coil. You could also wind one by self, but the uh, read uh, relay already has a nice coil, so I use that. And it's already in a package. Here I have a rectifier diode, a resistor to protect the base of the transistor, and basically, I, yeah, this is a very, very simple amplifier. So in here it goes to a regular I open, so that's, yeah, it's not much in it, so that's uh, the whole thing. And here we see the source code. It basically fits in one main file. It's pretty simple. It generates the horizontal sync signal uh, with the timer circuits of the Atmel chip I used there, and um, also um, checks if the um, if the deflection is still in place and turns off it if necessary. So that's all. Uh, it's all in the um, VGI package, so you can download this and take this C code if you like. If you like to use it for your own vector monitor application. So that's it for now. Um, for the interested ones, um, the monitor was an IBM 5151. The service manual of that are easily available on the internet. For the Vectrex, there are also service manuals available. Yeah, so far, I hope you enjoyed it. Take care and goodbye.